Hello and welcome to Review Preview, episode 3 with me, Mr F1 Radio, for the Chinese Grand Prix Review and the Bahrain Grand Prix Preview. Well, once again, 2013 hasn't let us down yet, with another great race in Shanghai, China. This week, we didn't have any team orders to end the race early, and we had drama right down to the final corner. We also didn't have a wet qualifying. Anyway, after qualifying, Red Bull's Mark Webber was disqualified from qualifying for a fuel problem, which saw him start from the pit lane, having qualified 14th. Um, which only started a miserable weekend for him. Um, well, the grid shaped up like this. It was Hamilton on pole, Kimi Raikkonen was second, Alonso was third, uh, Nico Rosberg, a mistake at the final corner, saw him only fourth, Felipe Massa was fifth, Grosjean, struggling this year uh, behind his teammate, was only sixth, Ricciardo, a fantastic qualifying for him, um, trying to show Red Bull that he wants that he deserves a seat in fact, uh, in place of Mark Webber next year. Button was eighth, the highest uh, placed driver on the medium compound tyres, having done a the slowest lap in qualifying, probably, even slower than the HRTs last year. Uh, Vettel was ninth, having not set a lap time, and Nico Hulkenberg was tenth, also not setting a lap time. If we review our uh, predictions from last week, I said pole position was going to get to Lewis Hamilton, and I was correct in that one. Uh, RC Muppet A also said pole position was going to go to Lewis Hamilton. Um, anyway, as the race started, uh, it was a great start from Lewis Hamilton, just the start he needed from pole position. Okay, uh, Kimi Raikkonen had a dreadful start, to say the least. Um, They'd been, he'd been doing practice starts in the pit lane and they were struggling to find the right clutch bite point setting which saw, and they changed it at the last minute on the formation that which saw him result in a poor start. Um, all 22 cars made it around the first corner and uh, and it was quite early on in the race we could see the soft tyres that Pirelli had taken, the really not very durable tyres that uh, just weren't lasting at all. I think they pitted on lap five for tyres all around that uh, point of view. Um, I will be doing another F1 debate on Pirelli's tyres because uh, they are a massive talking point at the moment. But um, yes, um, so they were pit everyone pitted for tyres, but just before the pit stops came around, the DRS was activated. And uh, Fernando Alonso and Felipe Massa, having another great start for Ferrari, were able to both go up the inside of Lewis Hamilton down into T1. And DRS, another massive talking point at the moment, um, which could possibly do an F1 debate on that, um, looked a bit too easy down the main straight. If you couldn't overtake down the back straight, it would get you close enough to get them down the pit straight. And people were overtaking you well before the first corner. And Martin Brundle definitely had a strong opinion uh, on that. Um, also, a couple of incidents uh, near the midfield on the opening couple of laps. On the end of the first lap, Adrian Sutil uh, rammed his teammate off the road, uh, which actually took out the Pirelli markings on the front right-hand tyre of Paul Duresta, and that cost him massively um, as the race panned out. Um, but Adrian Sutil, um, well, that move came back to bite him only a couple of laps later as Esteban Gutierrez, uh, the rookie for Sauber, misjudged his braking point on high fuel into a heavy braking zone and slammed straight into the back of Adrian Sutter. It was a phenomenal impact. Uh, Gutierrez was very lucky that his car never went airborne. Uh, we, could have, we could have seen another Belgian Grand Prix incident from last year. Um, incidentally, um, Gutierrez has been given a five-place grid penalty for that incident for Bahrain. So it's not looking good for the young rookie at the moment, and he really will have to up his game since Nico Hulkenberg is on top form at the moment. Anyway, after the pit stops, it did mean that midfielders were leading this race, and it was Nico Hulkenberg once again, third time uh, leading a race in his third different car. 
But people normally say he only led the race twice, but he did briefly lead the Brazilian Grand Prix in his Williams in his rookie season. Um, so uh, Vettel was a lot quicker in the end and was able to get past him. In the pit stop phase, a poor pit stop from uh, Sauber costing Nico Hülkenberg uh, there. Uh, Mark Webber, having been demoted to the back of the grid, started from the pit lane. They took uh, some rear wing off, so he'd be quicker down the straights. Pitted on lap one for his medium compound tyres and was going very well until he came up behind Jean-Éric Verne in the Toro Rosso. And this incident, it's a straight, it's a real strange one, this. Because, because here you've got Jean-Éric Verne driving for Toro Rosso and he's looking at Mark Webber's seat or Sebastian Vettel's if one of them is to leave at the end of the season, he's trying to prove what he's worth. Realistically, if he's thinking the long game, he should have let him should have let Weber through. But he look if you watch the move, he looks so tentative about it. He looks like he's going to let him through, and at the last minute thinks, "No, I'm not going to let you through. I'm going to slam the door in your face and dive straight to the in, uh, the apex, leaving Weber in a wedge that was just going to be ever closing." And the two made contact uh, down into uh, T4, I think it is. Um, Weber broke his front wing, a giant run, a span round, um, and this really just set the tone for the rest of Mark Weber's afternoon. Um, that incident has given given him a three place grid penalty for the uh, the Bahrain Grand Prix, uh, so that compounds another miserable miserable weekend for him. But the weekend got worse for Mark Weber. He managed to get round the, the rest of the lap. Quite, quite easily, um, came into the pit lane for a change of tyres and a new front wing. Now, we know Red Bull love their quick stops, they've got the fastest pit stop ever. So you think, right, we have the fastest pit stop ever, we know how to change four tyres, so when we've got to put a front wing on as well, we'll be able to do this with a breeze. Well, you'd be wrong. In a 12 second stop, they have managed to change three tyres, and, well, they did change all four tyres in the front wing, but unluckily for Mark Webber, the wheel nut broke. Uh, I think he said it was at turn six. You could feel the right rear coming loose, and he set, and you, you see him down the main straight as the leaders were going past, driving so slowly, and he goes into the hairpin at the end of the straight, and I think it may have been the, uh, a Ferrari or a Mercedes uh, going past, and it put Weber right on the curb, which meant that he had to go sort of off, he had to take the right hand side of the car off the track, and it pulled, and the curb pulled the wheel off, off the car. Had the, had the leaders not been going past, he'd have been able to take the corner a lot wider, and he'd have been able to keep the tyre on, but he couldn't keep the tyre on, the tyre uh, went off, rolled across, nearly hit uh, the Ferrari, I believe it was Fernando Alonso, and um, as it came, it hit, as it was rolling across the track, it nearly wiped out his teammate, but then it, even closer it was for Nico Hulkenberg, who got stuck right old in old no man's land, not knowing which way to go. Luckily, he managed to avoid the tyre. And I don't know why, but Weber stopped the car there on the edge of the track and gave up on his weekend. I think if the wheel had come off, he, you know, he was only uh, not far at all away from the pit lane. He could have made it uh, to the pit lane, but I think. Um, if they wanted to tie the car, put a new gearbox in it for Bahrain, and uh, to go with his three-place grid penalty. Um, as a strategy was uh, unfolding, Kimi Räikkönen was right on the back of Lewis Hamilton, and then um, they Räikkönen came to overtake Sergio Checo Perez, and uh, well. Well, we had the fame, another brilliant Kimi quote from uh, the incident. Uh, he tried to go around the outside um, on the ex uh, through turn three, I think it is, and uh, it was also in a w an ever closing wedge. Got on the grass, lost the front, lost the car completely, and the front of his car went straight into the back of Sergio Perez and majorly, uh, quite majorly damaged um, Raikkonen's front wing. I think. Uh, it was cost, I think, I can't remember how long it was costing uh, Lotus each lap, but uh, overall it cost them 
about 10 seconds in total, which was the uh, margin that Fernando Alonso had over Kimi Raikkonen. So that would have been an interesting end to the race had they have changed that front wing. Um, anyway, soft tyres had to be used for the people who started on the midfield. Uh, in the midfield, Bethel was one of them. Hulkenberg did his in uh, stop for softs in the middle stint and lost pace just after that. At the end, Jensen Button and um, Sebastian Vettel both went to the soft compound tyres. Uh, the McLaren driver struggled um, and his tyres went off pretty quickly. But Vettel kept the pace on and turned down, I think it was a 17 second uh, deficit to Lewis Hamilton. Right down to the last lap where it was two seconds and after the first sector he was right on his back. Lewis Hamilton going through the S's um, uh, had a caterum of Guido van der Gaard, I think it was. Uh, and he couldn't get out of the way. And Lewis Hamilton on the radio going, blue flags, blue flags. But uh, luckily, down into one of the tight corners at the sm at the end of the small straight that leads onto the big long straight. Vet uh, they both got past Guido van der Gaard and uh, Vettel ran wide, a little bit wide. He ran deep and it ultimately cost him uh, going down the back straight. It just gave Lewis Hamilton that little extra breathing space he needed. And it did mean that... Even though after a, f a massive lockup into the last corner and somehow kept it on the road, was able to take third place, consecutive third place for him in his Mercedes. And it was an emphatic way to end the race. My heart was absolutely pounding, cheering on for Lewis Hamilton. So um, the top 10 at the end of the race were Alonso uh, ahead of Raikkonen. Lewis Hamilton held out Vettel for third and fourth. Uh, Button, a great drive, says there's still uh, more room for improvement for McLaren uh, in fifth. Massa uh, was sixth um, after, I don't really know it went wrong for Felipe Massa. Uh, strategy, strategy again uh, ultimately cost him. Ricciardo, uh, or Ricardo, however uh, you, know, you want to pronounce his name, was seventh, able to hold station. And he broke his front wing, in fact, and tore us. I think he could have had Felipe Massa had he not broken the front wing against Nico Rosberg. Uh, Paul Di Resta was eighth, a good recovery. Grosjean, uh, another poor weekend for him, but he has scored in all three um, Grand Prix weekends, which is a lot better than he did last year. But still disappointed for him. And Hulkenberg, a lack of pace. Um, in the in his um, soft tyre and final medium compound tyre stint, saw him um, get, drop down to 10th place, which was where he started. Um, so as we look towards uh, Bahrain, I think, uh, well, we, we're set up for another great Grand Prix. There's still uh, a debate about whether the race should be going ahead because of protests. Um, it, this track is set to suit the Lotus car, so we could see Grosjean um, coming of age this weekend. Or we could see Kimi Raikkonen, another win. Vettel and Red Bull, it's a track that suits them as well. Um, Mercedes uh, might be a difficult weekend for them. Reliability will be key for them. Another retirement for Nico Rosberg, a suspension, their, their new hydraulic suspension, which is making them quicker. A problem with that, they think, um, when he was going around the corner, the front right end of the car was lifting up off the ground, so they had to retire the car in China. So if Mercedes could be up there, if reliability is there, Ferrari, they could be quick as well. There's so many people in the mix for this weekend's Grand Prix, so it's going to be very interesting. Um, yeah, so we preview for uh, Bahrain, uh, Gutierrez and uh, it's Gutierrez and Weber have grid penalties, uh, three for Weber, five for Gutierrez. Heike Kovalainen is in for case from for FP1. Uh, be pretty worried if I was Charles Pick or Guido van der Gaard. It looks like um, I wouldn't be surprised if one of them loses their seat midway through this season. Um, so as we look at the predictions for uh, Bahrain, um, I think it's going to be a Sebastian Vettel pole no matter what Kimi Raikkonen in the Lotus is able to do. Vettel will just be on it. I think Weber, I w he could be he could be up there in qualifying, but he's then got that grid penalty. So I'll go pole for Sebastian Vettel. 
the race win then it could be tight um, but I think Sebastian Vettel will win the race especially if he's on pole because tyres are now playing into their hands because Peroni have revisited their tyre choice for this weekend and it is no longer the soft and hard compound tyres it is the soft it is the medium and hard tyres because of the ambient temperatures in Bahrain but I think they're just playing it safe uh, if you look on BBC Sports website Gary Anderson uh, is questioning whether Prey should listen to Red Bull's calls for tyre changes. Now, I, I will go through this in an F1 debate on uh, tyres and DRS, I think, but I love these tyres that are wearing out pretty quickly. It leads for more strategy. I know qualifying in China was a bit of a bore, but they're bringing in uh, more tyres for FP1 um, in Barcelona. So it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. Um, so... Well, thank you for listening. It's been another long video. Uh, I can't wait for this weekend's Grand Prix. Uh, it's a suitable time for everybody here. Uh, midday, so uh, it'll be it'll be a good Grand Prix this weekend, and hopefully there uh, isn't many demonstrations by Bahrain, by the people of Bahrain. Thank you for listening. I'm Mr. F1 Radio, and that was Review Preview Episode Three.